me. Look at me, Arturo. I'm looking at him, and tears were coming down his eyes. He said, Coach, just let me get up. If it, uh, he got up, I said, bounce for me. He bounced. And I said, what are you going to do this round? He said, I'm going to box him, Coach. He said, I'll be OK. Even people far from martial arts have heard of the famous trilogy, Gotti versus Ward. At the beginning of the 21st century, when their battles were booming, fighters of a much higher level performed in the professional ring. What is the secret to the success of Gotti and Ward? And how did it happen that their fights became a global asset? This question is not as simple as it seems at first glance. There are several highlights to the popularity of Mickey and Arturo. Before proceeding to their presentation, let's rewind. Go back to the beginning of the 21st century and remember with what baggage these two approach their famous trilogy. It is important because there we shall find part of the answer to our question. Let's put aside our emotions and look pragmatically at the dry numbers and statistics. Gaddy was a fairly famous fighter. He performed very well in the category of the second featherweight division and owned the IBF championship title and boxed against rivals of a good level. He defeated Tracy Harris Patterson, the adopted son of the famous Floyd Patterson, Wilson Rodriguez, and Gabriel Ruelas. Victories were not easy. In the second fight with Patterson, at the end of the first round, Arturo was knocked out, but the referee considered the blow to the liver area to be a low attack, thereby allowing Gotti to recover, return to the battle, seize the initiative, and win by the decision of the judges. In the battles with Rodriguez and Ruelas, Arturo was repeatedly shocked, but relied on his strength of character, which earned the love of the American public for his manifestations of courage. An important point, the battles came one after another. Arturo showed his character several times in a row. Managers and organizers of the battles remembered him. Fighters of such style as Gotti are not able to dominate the division for a long period of time, as their health will not allow it but they are able to do shows and attract the attention of the public. And where there are shows and spectators, there is money. The Canadian did have problems with his weight. He was forced to climb into the light division and then even higher, where the miracles came to an end. He lost to the average fighters of the lightweight division, Angel Manfredi and Ivan Robinson, repeatedly changed his coaching staff, spoke intermittently and was defeated by Oscar De La Hoya and returned with a quality victory over former champion Taryn Millett. With this baggage, Arturo approached the duel with Mickey Ward. Gotti hoped to get the title fight in the welterweight division. He received it, but the saga stretched as much as three fights and shocked the whole of America. And what about Ward? Mickey, unlike his opponent, spent his entire career in one division, the first welterweight. There weren't enough stars from the sky. He ended his career, he returned. He was always near the title, and once even went out to battle for the title of world champion. Ward lost to the owner of the IBF belt, Vince Phillips. The fight was stopped in the third round due to a strong cut in the Irish. Mickey lost to really top athletes, but confidently defeated fighters from the top 30. Before the fight with Arturo, he threw a fight of the year with Emmanuel Augustus. And controversially lost to Jesse James Legia. In the battle for the right to fight the absolute world champion, Kostya Zhu. Kostya did not bother overprotecting his belts, and two, the WBC and WBA, had to be left vacant. The winner of the Gotti Ward battle was to become a mandatory contender for the vacated WBC title. So, we come to the most important thing. Neither Ward nor Gotti claimed the laurels of the leader of the first welterweight division. However, given what kind of fights both had experienced prior to this meeting, the audience was entitled to expect 
a spectacle. Their expectations were fully met. Boxer styles made this fight interesting. The organizers of the boxing evening, represented by main events, took this fact into account and did not fail. This is the case when the soldiers found each other. The second factor, also in 2002 when the first two fights of Mickey and Arturo took place, fights were not wealthy events in the world of professional boxing. This was the transitional time between the end of the 90s and the beginning of the 2000s. It was a period of short-term stagnation. And against the background of all of this, the vivid battle of two fighters not claiming to be the best of the best became a cherry on the cake for the American public, who were yearning for a brutal slaughter. It's not surprising that after the first fight, where Ward won, immediate revenge followed. It is necessary to discard all unnecessary notions of honor and other nonsense from Mickey. These things were actively cultivated in the media and are good only for the movies and bright promotion of confrontations. The Irishman was driven solely by the material aspect. For the second fight against Arturo, he was promised a fee three times the amount that he could get for a possible title fight with Gianluca Branco. Ward fought two fights in a row and was clearly not going to stop. The second fight turned out to be very difficult for Mickey. For the first time, he managed to drag Gotti into his net, masterfully fed him with blows to the hull, and knocked him down in the legendary ninth round. The second time, Arturo acted tactically, more competently. In round three, he sent his opponent to the floor. The blow damaged Mickey's eardrum, which was actively mentioned in the media after the fight to promote the third fight. According to statistics, on average, more than 500 fighters sustain such injuries each year, and many continue to perform without going to the doctor.
This is round nine, the second version. On the official scorecard, set on Harold Beckerman. Don't fall into this trap. You understand? Yes. Three minutes. Can we do three minutes? Yes, sir. Let's go, baby. Okay. Still got the energy to fire off coming in the half of the round. That's what he's better doing. Gotti looked better than Ward, but broke his arm in the middle of the fight. This moment allowed Mickey to level the situation. Nevertheless, he succumbed to a judicial decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is Arturo Gotti! The third match was not long in coming. Was it for honor? Dignity? Revenge or the desire to prove something? No. Everything is much more commonplace. For the third fight with Arturo, Mickey received more than all previous fights of the year combined. Three million. He honestly fulfilled his obligations and fought his third battle of the year, thereby repeating the achievements of Rocky Marciano, Carmen Basilio, and Rocky Graziano. And with a calm soul, ended his career. of the left. No, it's not really turning all over the path right away. Bray all the way. In the opposite corner should go again. Nicky Ward lands a solid straight right. Gatti with a huge left hook. to the head and hurt his right hand again. Oh, on a wide swinging right hand. Round six has come to a close. Mickey knocked the other one down, has won each fight. They're standing and trading shots at the center of the ring. This is very good for Ward. Harold, how do you have it so far? Dan, this is close again. 57-56 has made this fight winnable for Mickey Ward. And God damn it, you've got to give him an extra point because he's a creep. Oh, Mickey Ward is on by a left hook. Left hook. Can Gaddy follow up? This is better. <laughs> this is better. And no championships involved. That's a phenomenal to get in a 15-round fight. Down in the sixth. Mickey Ward, the older fighter, can't catch him. Arturo Gatti dominated with his effective aggressiveness and his clean punch and his good. career and rebuilt himself as a fighter. That after the adversity he faced in this fight, and they rise again. As you can see, if we discard unnecessary emotions about the great confrontation and other nonsense, everything is quite transparent and plain. The styles of the fighters made the fight spectacular, and the managers and the athletes themselves sold the audience a beautiful picture of friendship after a fierce battle. Arturo Thunder. Mickey, thank you very much. Did, did either of you suspect that, you, that this fight would be as intense as the first fight between you? Larry, like I said before uh, the fight meeting, I know what type of man Mickey Ward is, and I knew he was coming in tonight to fight his best fight of his life. And if it would have been anybody else, they would have quit. 
And Mickey Ward hurt me in the third, fourth round. I hurt my hand in the third round, but Mickey Ward is unbelievable. He's got a heart. And for someone that wants to retire, he, held, he fought a hell of a fight. It was just special to go through with someone like him. To my last fight of my life. You know, obviously I didn't win the fight, but well, more importantly, I made a friend for life. Photos from the hospital and smiles with bloodied lips only added to the surroundings. And most importantly, both received fabulous fees. They knew what they were fighting for. They are not great warriors and not gladiators of the ring, as the commentators and the media have beautifully called them. These are two fighters from the rating who were at the right time and in the right place, in the crossroads of an era, and gave the public what they wanted. At the same time, they received decent fees, far exceeding the average salaries of fighters of their level. The beautiful picture after the battle finally struck the American spectator, who was longing for such slaughter, finally. After all, even an inexperienced boxing enthusiast is absolutely clear that such fights are dangerous to the health. Boxing, as Ray Leonard correctly noted in one of his interviews, is art. The art is not only to strike, but also to defend oneself during the battle. You can demonstrate quality fights without subjecting yourself to a beating. Mickey and Arturo did not have the necessary skills and the adequate level of boxing. They boxed as they knew how. A combination of many circumstances made their fights mega popular. This has nothing to do with high-level boxing and art. This is a performance of two fighters from the top five of the first welterweight division who beat each other to the joy of the crowd and received an invitation to repeat this twice for a good material reward. It was just business and not about honor. So what was it? The achievement of boxing history or a simple set of circumstances? The question is rhetorical. Ward and Gotti went down in boxing history. Now you know why this happened. Two worthy fighters squeezed the maximum out of each other, both literally and figuratively, and earned good money and fame. They maintained friendly relations. This was also a marketing ploy. When Mickey retired and began to train Arturo, nothing good came of this. But the guys again made good money on hype and media attention. Our world is a material one. A view from the perspective of finance is more productive, as otherwise no one would ever be so easily subjected to a beating in the ring. Most individuals value their lives too much.